Welcome to another sermon from the Lewis Church of Christ. And now, here's Mark. Our strategy at the church is to thrive. You see our Thrive banners, our Thrive plaques. We want you to thrive. We really do. Uh, We want to thrive as a church. And one of our strategies for thriving as a church, uh, in the next couple years, we're really giving focused attention to developing a lot of ministry teams where people can be involved to serve and to help, help you know, grow our church and help make our church the best possible church it can be. And uh, so we're developing some ministry teams. I need to tell you about one of the, 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 the newest ministry team that is, you know, just like launching here this month is a ministry team called SOS. It stands for Salty Old Saints. Now, I didn't say old, but you know what I'm talking about. Salty Old Saints. And really, it's it's a ministry just getting geared up, and uh, it's, you know, focused, the focused attention is going to be on our, you know, kind of a vintage ministry for us. You're targeting for those, you know, know, on the upper side of our church. It's going to focus on connecting and caring, and... um, for, you know, for each other, especially, you know, the, you, know you just have to put an age out there. I, you know, I can't say everybody over 95, none of you would ever go. So it's really like for 55 and above, and uh, there's going to be a special launch breakfast on November 21st at 8.30 in the Cove, and there's going to be a sign-up sheet that you can get your name on, just kind of help them prepare. But if you're interested in participating and just want to, you know, be a part of that, interested in, hey, what, what, what are they going to talk about? That breakfast is for you, and I'll keep reminding you about it. But November 21st, Saturday morning, uh, 8.30 in the Cove, a special breakfast is going to be held. So just want to kind of give you a heads up about that. And uh, all kinds of ministry teams just getting people involved, and that's going to be our newest one, and uh, very excited about that. Today we begin a sermon series. It's going to be a three-week sermon series called The Church. The Church. I love the church of Jesus. The church. The greatest organization on planet Earth. The church, and we're allowed to be part of it. The church. I love the church. I especially love our sector, uh, sector of the kingdom. And I, ho- I know I love our church family. And I hope you love our church family. And my prayer in this series is that we're going to better understand, we're going to look at some passages from the Apostle Paul that helps, is designed to help us better understand who we are as the people of God. And my prayer is, through this series, Your affection for the church of Jesus is going to grow and rise and increase like never before. The church. To be honest with you, um, the word church in our culture is a little bit confusing, isn't it? Most people in our culture refer to a church as a building. Oh, wow, look at that church. Man, it's got a very tall cross. Yes, it does. And they refer to it as a building. Many people in our culture refer to church as a place you can go, kind of in the likeness, hey, go, you know, I want to go to the mall, or I want to go down to the outlets, or I want to go to Moe's, or I want to go to the gym, or, or you know, I want to go to church. And they see it as a place you can go. I was taught as a kid uh, this little exercise, maybe some of you t- were too. You know, you could probably even say it with me, this is a church. This is the steeple, open the door, and there's all the people. Very small church. Now, that's cute, that's cute, but incorrect, right? Because the church is a reference to who we are as a people. The church is a reference to to all those people who decided to say no to the pattern of the world and to say yes to the person of Jesus, right? And so the church is always a reference to the people of God. The church is about us. So the series is designed just to help us enhance appreciation and an understanding about who we are as the people of God. 
Our text today starts out this way, um, just the first part. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers. Now, our text, here's how it starts out. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, indicating very clearly, right, that you used to be. But it's no longer true. Oh, you used to be foreigners. You used to be strangers to the things of God. But it's no longer true. But you used to be. You used to be a foreigner. You used to be outside the honest truth. You used to be lost. Really, Mark? We're going back to that? I thought you said last time you preached, you were so done with lost, you can't wait for November. I did say that, and I was so done, but... Here it is again. Lost. You're, you do remember our loss series, don't you? You're like, oh, yeah, but that was so October. Lost. You remember one of our main passages for lost? It's the same context. Ephesians chapter 2, look at verse 12 and 13. Look at this. Now remember that at one time you were separated from Christ excluded from citizenship in Israel, foreigners to the covenant and the, uh, you know, of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. You remember this text, so depressing. You were lost. You were lost. But look at verse 13. But now, I love how Adam said it last week. Don't you, do you remember this? Adam says, every one of you can have a but now moment with God. That was I like that. I wrote that in my notes. I want a but now moment with God. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away, you were so lost, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Oh, the blood. Remember? Oh, the blood. Because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross that takes away all of our sin, you who were lost, you who were so far away, have now been brought near because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, the blood. Now that sets us up for today's text. It's the same context. Look at our text for today. Consequently. You are no longer foreigners. You are no longer strangers to the things of God. But fellow citizens with God's people. And also members of His household. Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus Himself as the chief cornerstone. In Him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in Him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. Now we're just going to let this text just linger for most of the morning. This is such a powerful paragraph for us today. And I want you to know this paragraph is so powerful because of the use of illustrations in the text. Now, you know that an illustration has a purpose, right? And every illustration is used to, you know, kind of as an example to make something clear or to make something intelligible. Maybe it's to educate. Maybe it's to inspire. An illustration is is designed to illuminate our minds. This paragraph is so powerful because of the way it uses some incredible illustrations. And I want us to, I just want us to look at some illustrations that's going to empower us to have a better understanding and a better affection for the church of Jesus. The first illustration is that the church is a nation. It's a nation of people. You you saw that right there. Uh, You're no longer foreigners and strangers but fellow citizens with God's people. 
fellow citizens with God's people. We're a nation. We're a nation of people that belong to God. We're a nation. You, you might want to say, we are the Jesus nation. Now, some of you sports fans, you football fans out there, you're going to, you're going to understand this language. Let's see, let's see if any of you get this. Um, Raven Nation. I thought for sure that would be a hoop and holler. Raven Nation. Okay, a silent. Yeah, not this. All right, let me just try it. Eagle Nation. Okay, when, when, when you're three games in and your team cannot make the Super Bowl, you do have to go to a number two. Can I say Bengal Nation? Buckeye Nation. Now, you can't. You cannot deny Ohio's got some football going on right now. Who? <laughs> Losing, I don't even know what that stands for. Jesus Nation, you and I, yes, you and I are a nation of people. It's a Jesus Nation, and we are the Jesus Nation, fellow citizens of the same nation. That just, that just feels good. Nation. The second illustration that I want to point to is uh, a family. You're no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow, fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. He's talking about a family, God's family. I, I, want, I want you to know that this is my favorite illustration of the church, that we're a family. I love seeing us as a family. I love operating as a family. The family of God. Do you realize that you and I have been adopted into the royal God family. Wow. That's a great illustration. Adopted. Brothers and sisters together in the family of God. Wow. And so, we're the Jesus nation. We're the family of God. And there's a third illustration in here that shows us that the church is a building project with an indestructible foundation. Did you see that? Uh, look at verse 20 again. Build on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Notice that the building we're talking about isn't a completed building. No, it's a building project. It's a building project that is still in process. I love that, and it has an indestructible foundation. And so the three illustrations, the main three illustrations of the text, helping us get, get what, something about the church, we're the Jesus nation, we're the family of God, and we're a building project with an indestructible foundation. I love these illustrations, and I, I just want to use these illustrations today because they communicate some co life-giving concepts that we can't miss as the church. I want you to get these concepts. The first illustration, or, or the, t the first two illustrations of the text, the illustration of the church being a nation, the Jesus nation, and the church being a family, those illustrations are designed to help us understand the concept of belonging. The whole illustration of the church being a, a, a nation or the church being a family is simply to communicate the church is a place to belong. You belong here. A place to belong. A, a place to fit in. A place to be accepted. 
a, a place to love and be loved. A place to belong. I really think one of our greatest needs as humans is acceptance. To be loved and to love. And so the church is designed to be a family where we belong. A nation, a Jesus nation where we, man, we need some jersey. A place to belong. You belong here. Welcome to the crossing. The illustration of the foundation in this text, I think is designed to communicate that the church is a place to believe. The foundation of our nation and the foundation of our family is the Word of God. The Word of God. Uh, our verse says, build on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. So here, I'm thinking that this foundation is really designed to help us understand the church is a place to believe. Yeah, it's a place to belong. It's also a place to believe. And you and I are to believe the word of God. Now, the word of God primarily is the living word of God, which is Jesus. And we are to totally trust him, right? But the word of God secondarily is the written word of God, the scriptures. And this reference to the apostles and prophets is a very clear reference to the word of God, the written word of God. And so it's the word of God that we believe, that we wholeheartedly trust. Now here's the truth. Everybody believes something. Everybody believes something, but the church... The church is a group of people, a family of believers who believe in the word of God, Jesus and the, and the scriptures. That's why the bottom line of ministry at this church, here's really, you boil it all down, here's the only thing we're ever going to ask you to do at this church. Place your full trust in Jesus Christ totally based on what you hear him saying to you through the scriptures. That's the bottom line of ministry at our church. Put your full trust in Jesus based on what you're hearing him say to the scriptures. You can't go wrong with the word of God. And the word of God is there as our foundation because the church is a place to belong. You belong here. It's also a place to believe. And we believe in God's word. The third illustration of the church being a building project with, with this indestructible foundation is designed to communicate the church. Yeah, it's a place to belong. Yeah, it's a place to believe. But it's a place to become. Look at this. Look at this last verse, 22 again. Just check this out. And in him, in Jesus, you too, a reference to all of us, are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by His Spirit. The church is a place to, believe, to belong, yes. A place to believe, yes. And a place to become. And did you see what this text says we're becoming? We're a building project meant to house the Holy Spirit of God. Us? Us. Really? Really. That's so awesome. I don't even know if I understand it. That sounds so valuable. The church, a place to belong, a place to believe, and a place to become. I love the church. Okay, what do we do with that? Where do we go with this? You know, how do we win with this text? What, what are the takeaways? What, you know, what do we do? Can I suggest 
that the church of Jesus, here, here, here's where I went with this whole concept, and you know, I want to suggest it to all of us today. Can I suggest that the church of Jesus get a new welcome mat? That's what I really think this text is designed to help us do. I think the church of Jesus needs to, get, to go out. We need to get a new welcome mat. Now, now, hold on. I'm not necessarily suggesting that Rich Norris go out and design a really awesome welcome mat for the patio out there. So when you, welk, you walk up, you're like, welcome to the crossing. That, now, that would be cool. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, what I'm talking about is maybe more of an attitude. You know, because a mat out front is not going to really do any good because we're not, the, the building isn't the church. We are the church, and so therefore I'm going to suggest that the church needs to put out a new welcome mat, and that welcome mat is going to be more of an attitude. And it's the first attitude people encounter when they encounter us. You know, you walk up to a house and, ooh, well, welcome mat. Okay, well, I hope so. What's, what ought to be the first attitude people encounter from the church? I want to suggest it needs to be the attitude of, you're welcome here. The first attitude people experience, whether it's verbal or nonverbal or facial, whatever, it needs to express, you're welcome here. Amen? Wouldn't that be a great idea for the church of Jesus? Let's get a new welcome mat. That's very attitudinal, and it's about your welcome here. Let me explain what I mean. You and I need to welcome the lordship of Jesus. Our welcome mat should always be communicating, Jesus, his lordship is welcome here. The lordship of Jesus. You and I became members of the Jesus nation. You and I became members of God's family when you and I submitted to the leadership and the lordship of Jesus in our lives, right? Not a newsflash, that's when it happened. The Bible explains very clearly that when you, as a response of your faith, were baptized into Christ, you were buried with Christ and resurrected with Christ. And the Bible keeps telling us that we're being built to house the Spirit of God, right? And so, the Spirit of Christ. And so, we're doing life with Jesus. And if you are really doing life with Jesus, you're really going through life walking with Jesus, that means there's two of you. And if there's two of you, one of you is going to be leading and one of you is going to be following. Now, who should have the leadership role? And why do we keep fighting? Welcome the Lordship of Jesus. Second, we need to welcome the Word of Jesus. We need to be better at welcoming the Word of Jesus. It is by God's Word that He created all things. And it's with His Word He sustains all things. And the Bible is the written word of God. And it leads us and guides us and convicts us and challenges us and changes us and saves us. The word of God is life for us. You and I need to be way better at welcoming his word. King David of the Old Testament would encourage us, you better be meditating. How often? Day and night. We welcome the Lordship of Jesus. We welcome the Word of Jesus. And uh, you see this one. We need to welcome the Spirit of Jesus. We are being built as, as a dwelling to house the Spirit of God, to, where God's going to dwell by the Spirit of His God. You and I need to be welcoming the Spirit every day in step with the Spirit because the Holy Spirit wants to, he wants to come alongside us. He wants to do life with us. He wants to convict us and comfort us and lead us and guide us and change us. Oh, welcome the Spirit of Jesus. The Lordship of Jesus, the Word of Jesus, the Spirit of Jesus. You know what? We also need to be better at welcoming the people of Jesus. You know who the people of Jesus are, right? Us! We need to be, well, we need to be better at welcoming each other. The Bible tells us over and over and over again things like love one another, forgive one another, 
Be kind to one another. Be patient with one another. Offer hospitality to one another. One another, one another, one another. In fact, this past week, I found a list of 59 one another's in the New Testament. That's a lot of one another's. Yeah. And the whole purpose is designed to get you and I to be better at welcoming, receiving, accepting, and loving each other. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. We're on the same team. Welcome each other. We're going to welcome the Lordship of Jesus. We're going to welcome the Word of Jesus. We're going to work, welcome the Spirit of Jesus. We're going to welcome the people of Jesus. And you know what else? We need to welcome the outsiders of Jesus. You and I need to be way better at welcoming the lost. No matter how lost they are. You and I need to be better at welcoming the lost, no matter how lost they are. And maybe, here's our hope, our grace to them will point them to His grace. That's our hope. You and I need to get so much better at welcoming those outside of Jesus because they belong here too. In fact, don't you forget, you used to be one of them. And somebody welcomed you. And you found God's welcome of you through that. Doesn't that make sense? Let's put out a new welcome map. That basically says, everyone welcome. Everyone welcome. Now, just a little asterisk to the sermon I want you to know about that's in my notes. Bible tells us there's two people not welcome. Two people not welcome here. Jesus says to the, the first person not welcome in his family is the brother, the one who claims to be a follower and refuses to give up a sexually immoral lifestyle. Not welcome here. The second person Jesus says is not welcome here is the brother, the one who claims to be a follower of Jesus and often claims to be a leader of Jesus but is always busy causing dissension in the church. In fact, the Bible says, have nothing to do with him. Other than that, everybody's welcome. Everybody is welcome. I want you to consider for a minute the order of the outline I just presented. The church is a place to, what was first? Be, be, no. Oh, I believe you can't even read. Belong. And it's a place to believe and then a place to become. Now, I want you to consider that order because I think that's the right order. Now, think for a moment. There are a lot of churches out there that come at ministry with a different philosophy and they kind of jumble this order. There's a lot of churches out there that would love to suggest the order needs to be believe, belong, and then become. And they continue to preach Hey, you believe like us, then we'll let you be part of us. That's not the grace of Jesus. In fact, Jesus kept saying, come follow me. Come be with me. Come do life with me. You belong with me. Now, we'll work on the beliefs as we go, but you just come be with me. Because Jesus knew the more time people spent with him, the more time he would be able to work on their beliefs and he would help them actually change their lives, right? This is the correct order. Let's always be a church that puts out the welcome mat first. Let's always be a church that communicates verbal, nonverbal, you belong here. And know that the more they are here interacting, the more that we're going to work on their beliefs and the more we're going to become something really awesome together. Amen? 
Don't you ever let this church be a church that puts belief first. Belong, believe, become. So let's put out the new welcome mat. You are welcome here. This has been a presentation of the Lewis Church of Christ. We are located at 15183 Coastal Highway, Milton, Delaware, three miles north of Lewis on Highway 1. Our service times are 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday morning. 